competition. Time now, though, for our regular political panel. Today, I'm joined by Labor MP Sally Situ in Sydney and Liberal MP Zoe McKenzie, who is in Melbourne. Thank you both for joining us today on Afternoon Briefing. Good afternoon. Sally, Thank I'd like to start with you. Looking at the polls, why does it appear hard to convince Australian voters to say yes in this referendum? When I am out and about in the community, I think there's a great deal of optimism that isn't being reflected in the polls. There is momentum building for this campaign. And that is because um, I think Australians are generous people. They recognise that there's a moral case to be made here for us to improve the lives of Indigenous Australians. If you, that, that the fact that um, they are the most incarcerated people on the planet, that if you are a young Indigenous male, you're more likely to go to jail than you are to university. They, that should hurt us in our souls that those facts still remain and that the gap still stands. And I know that there are many in the community and I've felt it, um, the momentum build with all the volunteers that are coming out to support the Yes campaign because they want to recognise Indigenous Australians in our constitution. They also want to get better outcomes for them and that's exactly what the Voice to Parliament will do. Um, and we, we want to make sure that um, this is a unifying moment for us as a country to come together to say that we are a compassionate and big hearted country, one where we think that there ought to be better outcomes for Indigenous Australians. Zoe, polling once again, I, I appreciate we do have to take polling with a grain of salt, but six weeks out there's a lot of undecided voters. Why do you think that's the case? Look, I think people are just desperate for detail. Um, I agree with everything Sally said about a desire to see better outcomes and that it is a duty on all of us parliamentarians and non-parliamentarians to do everything we can to close that gap. But what I hear on the street when I'm walking around is, well, what's the detail? Can you tell me what the detail is, Zoe? Do you have the detail? No, I just have what you have. So we don't know yet what the voice will look like. We don't know who will be able to make representations. We don't know on what topics they'll be able to make representations. And people just have a, a gnawing doubt. Why won't you tell me? Why can't I have the detail? Why can't I be confident that my vote will produce this outcome or that outcome. This trust me, I'm the government stuff, it doesn't wash. So people are concerned, they have a right to know more. The questions that have been asked are really reasonable, but this trust us will tell you everything the day after, that makes people feel uncomfortable. We've had the Prime Minister refer to phases, the voice is the first phase and then there's truth-telling and treaty to come afterwards. He doesn't refer to that as much anymore. But people say to me, what does that mean? And I have to say, I don't yet know. So that's why I think there are still so many undecided. And indeed, over time, people are now more likely, I find, on the streets down in Flinders to say, look, I'm a no. Um, I've looked at it. I've thought hard about it. Uh, I've looked at the Constitution. I've got a great electorate where people really do, they read the Constitution, they will read the pamphlet that turned up in our office yesterday uh, and they will make a decision for themselves and I think that's the right way for them to go. But at the moment they're saying, can I just have some more detail please? But Zoe, when you look at the Constitution, two key areas, for example, tax and defence are mentioned in there, yeah. but there's no detail about how tax policy should be run, there's no detail about how many Defence Force members there should be. So. Why do people need all of the details ahead of time when governments make decisions constantly about how, you know, Australia runs? Stephanie, you are making my point beautifully. So when the Constitution was made, uh, those things were reasonably straightforward. Defence really meant we will do what the United Kingdom does. And over the years, those powers have been interpreted by the High Court. The taxation power, for example. Remember, taxation used to be in the remit of the states alone. Then there was a deal to actually allow the federal government to take on some taxation powers during one of the wars. And it was a power they never gave back. And when the states tried to get it back and took it to the High Court to get it back, the High Court said, no. So the High Court plays a really important role here. And so, yes, you have some generic language in the current amendment, 
But it's not that generic. Remember, this amendment creates a whole new chapter. At the moment, the chapters of the Constitution go to things like the establishment of the Parliament, the establishment of the executive government, the establishment of the court system, and now it's proposed the establishment of the voice. It is given a status at that level. One might say that if it were to be challenged with the High Court, the High Court would say this is meant to have a meaningful and enduring change. It is meant to change the way the government operates. We've heard many say that. Malcolm Turnbull's been out on the road today. Last August he said this will be an enormous change to the way our parliamentary system works. But I'll just interrupt there though. Power. Malcolm Turnbull has actually been out today saying that he very much does support yep. the voice to parliament. Now, I, I would like to bring Sally in um, to respond to the opposition's claims that more detail is needed ahead of the referendum. I think that the point around detail here is that the detail is there. It is in the alteration um, that is up for um, people to vote on. And it's that third point, that the parliament will decide on the composition, the function, how the voice will run. That is where the detail is, uh, because that is exactly what has happened on so many issues that are in the constitution. It is up to the parliament to decide how many of those things function. For example, the ABC, um, the national broadcaster, is in the constitution. But the details for how it's run or funded, that isn't in there. That is decided by the parliament. And that's exactly what that point is about. Uh, the detail is there. So the idea that it's not there, that this is just a fuzzy idea, is incorrect. Do you have a hard campaign ahead of you, though, Sally, given how hard the opposition is pushing on this point? There is something that we have on the Yes campaign that the No campaign will never have, and that is incredible volunteers with enthusiasm because they want what all Indigenous Australians want, what non-Indigenous Australians want, what new migrants want in this country, and that is to hand a better future over to the next generation. And that's exactly what The Voice will deliver. It will say to the next generation of Indigenous kids that it is not OK that these gaps remain, that we as a country need to do better and that we need to come together and, and get better outcomes for all Indigenous Australians. Zoe, what does Australia look like the morning after the referendum if voters say no? Yeah, Stephanie, that is the most important question uh, and the one that I spend most of my time thinking about. This debate has been terribly divisive in a way that not even I foresaw. Uh, I see real sadness amongst our community. I see friendships that are on hold. I see families that don't want to sit down together. I have seen a real nastiness that has frankly taken my breath away because I didn't think this would happen. Uh, so our job, all of us, whatever that vote is, whatever that vote is, yes or no, is to make sure we bring the country back together the day after. Um, I wish the, the debate were less sharp in our communities. Uh, I think there were many options that could have been pursued not to have such a divisive debate. There could have been different words, there could have been a different approach. We know there's 85 per cent support for constitutional recognition of our First Nations people. So there were many alternatives to this divisive and quite frankly painful debate. So the important focus is the day after and how we bring Australians back together, how we get back to being proud and strong and unified and equally back to addressing the different outcomes between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. Every day in question time we hear what the difference the voice will make will be. Well, I say those things could be done now. There is funding in place, there is policy architecture in place. All of those solutions my, my, could be my, sought and I'm with sorry to advice interrupt, but now. But with all the best intentions of governments of all persuasions over many decades, um, we have been putting a lot of time and effort and money in trying to close the gap. But it hasn't budged on so many measures. And this this is a very modest request from Indigenous Australians. This is what they are asking for because they are saying that this is what will improve outcomes for their communities. And we know it works. Uh, with Aboriginal medical services that have Indigenous um, people working there and that are community controlled, 
they have shown to be um, better at getting um, more Indigenous Australians to get medical checkups. They, there was a medical centre in South East Queensland where they worked hard um, together and they were able to lift um, the number of Indigenous Australians going to get medical checkups from 500 to 20,000. And that, that's exactly the sort of outcomes we want to see, a, a real lift in um, health, in, health outcomes. And that comes from working closely with Indigenous communities. And that's exactly what The Voice is about. So this is a debate that will go on for the next six weeks. I would like to also look at another area that's being discussed today away from The Voice and that is the Snowy Hydro 2.0 project. The Sydney Morning Herald is saying that the cost has blown out to $12 billion. To put this in perspective, when it was announced under the former government, then Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, it was a $2 billion price tag. Zoe, is this a project worth go is it a project that's worth keeping on going and, and not cancelling it now? Look, I heard uh, Chris Bowen refer to um, advice he's received this week uh, and the changes in the estimated costs. So I do know uh, that when this project uh, was handed into the hands of the new government, uh, it had been given a tick of approval from the ANAO in terms of its management, its governance, uh, its costing looked to be somewhere between 4.5 and 6 billion at that time, which is still more than had been estimated back in 2017. But 12 billion is a doubling again. Goodness knows how we've got to that point after just 15, 16 months of government. I Do think you still want to see it go ahead though? Andrews. Is this a project you want to see completed? We must have as many sources of energy as possible. People at home are suffering 25, 30% increases in their energy bills when what they had been promised at the election was a $275 reduction. We must look at all options on the table. This government has been myopic in just looking at wind and solar. It must look at hydro. It must look at green nuclear energy in time. The rest of the world is 50 countries are looking at nuclear energy and we keep saying no, 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 we can't look at it. We've got to look at a diversity of sources so that we have the energy security we need going forward. Sally, I'll just get you briefly to respond. Why is it good use of taxpayer dollars to push ahead with this project? I agree with Zoe. We, we need to make sure that this project goes ahead. It's going to be an important source of renewable energy. Uh, where this government differs from the previous government is that we will be upfront and honest with the community about the cost of this project and I'm really pleased that there is a current review underway about the cost and efficiency gains that could be made. Uh, but we won't hide that review uh, and I'm looking forward to the Minister releasing the results from that because ultimately we need transparency and accountability in our government and unfortunately we didn't get that with the previous government. They hid for 12 months the change in costings for this project. We will not do that. Sally and Zoe, thank you so much for your time this afternoon and we'll see you back here in Canberra next week when Parliament sits. Will do. See you then. Thanks, Stephanie.